Hi, I'm Madeline Duran from the Australian Institute of International Affairs. Dr. Amy C. Wright is a former US Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defence for South and Southeast Asia and now directs the Southeast Asia Program at the Centre for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, D.C. She spoke today at the National Security Colleges Conference on strengthening Australia-Japan-U.S. cooperation. She's here with me now to discuss the strategic challenges and opportunities faced by the U.S., Japan and Australia. Welcome. Thank you very much. So I'd like to start off today by asking your opinions on what you believe the Trump administration's recent commitment to sending a clear um, signal to China in the Southeast Asia um, Sea will mean. Yeah, there have been some statements made by Pr President Trump and his uh, nominees on the South China Sea. Um, but look, I think it's, it's actually really important for this new Trump administration to take a look, a top-down strategic review of the South China Sea and look at options that may be available and what might be most effective um, and, uh, and come up with a real strategy so that they can be proactive rather than reactive. Um, and, and once they do that, you know, I think the next step would be to bring in allies and partners um, to kind of consult with them about the direction we're headed and hopefully get some, uh, some collaboration, some cooperation, and then go out with some really clear and consistent strategic messaging um, that's backed up by clear, consistent, sustainable actions. So um, I think that that would actually be a very healthy development. Um, and so I certainly, um, I would certainly encourage the new Trump administration to do that sort of top-down strategic review from the very early days of their administration. Right now, I think they're sort of finding their sea legs on the issue, um, but I think a really careful analysis once they're in place would be very helpful. And do you foresee any substantive changes to the Australia-US alliance under this new administration? No, I really don't. I mean, of course, we still are learning a lot day by day about the Trump administration and their strategic priorities and the way that they're going to go about doing business. So, you know, there's a lot we don't know yet. But um, the but stepping back a minute, the U.S.-Australia alliance right now is in a very, very strong place. In recent years, we've made um, tremendous improvements in our alliance through the force posture agreement and the cost sharing agreement that was just signed. And so there's a much stronger institutional basis for our alliance and our alliance cooperation in the Indo-Pacific uh, with our rotational presence of Marines and, and Air Force assets uh, through Darwin and, and Tyndall respectively. So, um, and a whole range of other things that we're doing uh, well together and building up joint allied capabilities in maritime and cyber in space, we have a very strong intel sharing uh, relationship, mm -hmm. which is very much beneficial to both sides. So I think, you know, because we're on such a strong footing right now in the alliance, and also because the fact that we are doing all of these things is based on a shared understanding of the region um, that it's incredibly important to work together as allies and with our other allies and partners to um, to maintain deterrence and to shape a benign regional security environment where long-standing rules and norms will continue to be adhered to. These have benefited everyone in the region, um, including things like freedom of navigation and open commerce, and um, and to continue to build an open, inclusive architecture. So it, we we share that strategic framework as we look at the region and the long-term challenges in the region. And so based on our share, you know, each of our national interests, we've, we've come together in this way to do more uh, in terms of institutionalizing some alliance cooperation in the, in the Asia Pacific. And I think that that will, will continue. And it's important for Australia not only to look at what's happening in the White House, but what's happening on Capitol Hill. Republicans have control of both um, House mm -hmm. and the Senate. How do you see um, the defense budget um, transforming underneath their control? Yeah, it is going to be interesting to see um, where the Republicans go in terms of a defense budget because there had been so much um, emphasis on um, deficit hawks concerned about spending. And uh, President Trump have, has put forward some very expensive plans 
like moving from a, a, a Navy of 274 ships to 350. Um, but I do think that there's likely, we'll likely see support among the Republicans in Congress to um, ramp up some defense spending on things like the Navy, building a bigger Navy, and but also um, things like um, restoring readiness t across all the services, something that was hurt badly in the sequester um, that took place by Congress, both parties in Congress in, in recent years. Um, and some other things as well, like um, making sure that our nuclear deterrence is up to date and technologically um, um, ready and, and maintained. So I do think we'll probably see um, a, a fair amount of increased spending on those kind of key priorities. And could you go into a little, uh, into the priorities of the Republicans' defense budget a little bit more? So beyond um, increasing their Navy, where do you feel that this um, military power will then go from there? Well, um, I don't know. I mean, I think uh, it, it depends a lot on where the, the um, Trump administration is going to want to prioritize their efforts. And this is where, as I said before, we don't know yet really where their strategic priorities are going to lie. So whether there will be a real focus on increasing resources, increasing assets uh, to the Indo-Pacific theater, um, or whether there will be more of a focus on conflicts in the Middle East, you know, which President Trump talks a lot about countering ISIS. Um, or other kinds, you know, it's, it's hard to know right now how that balance will play out. Um, so finally, I would just like to ask you um, to delve into that a little bit more. Do you believe there's any, um, where do you believe Trump will take his foreign military commitments, given that he's also indicated that America might adopt a more isolationist strategy? Again, it's really hard to say because, you know, he's talked about, um, not having, not not getting involved in a lot of conflicts and America first, focusing on America, but at the same time he has talked a lot about trying to destroy ISIS um, and taking the fight to them. So um, I that's something I can't predict yet about about how how much um, how interventionist uh, a, a president President Trump will be in the Middle East. Um, at the same time, he's made some very, he said some very tough words on China, um, and uh, as have his nominee for Secretary of State and his spokesperson. Um, it's not really clear exactly um, what they meant by their comments on the South China Sea, but, uh, but President Trump has made clear that he, you know, um, sees China's actions in the South China Sea as really problematic, and he's also talked, of course, about economic actions. Uh, by China and and uh, made some provocative statements on Taiwan and the one China policy. So <clears throat> I think we re I, we really have to wait and see um, how President Trump and his team are going, what kind of approach they're going to take to China and how um, uh, you know how willing they will be to really um, throw some unpredictability um, into the mix and um, and take on China in a new way, and then the other big question would be how would China respond, and would that lead to some um, some kind of uh, potential clash in the South China Sea or elsewhere, or um, or will it just lead to a good sort of negotiation or a good understanding of 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 where we need to go going forward? So, a lot to watch for. It's a lot of uncertainty. <laughs> yes, there is. Thank you so much for your Thank time. Thank you. Appreciate it. For more videos and interviews, please go to our website on internationalaffairs.org.au or follow us on Facebook or Twitter.